Isn't this fantastic? What a great way to end the afternoon. But I hope you all enjoyed another day of live at the waterhole. I'll see you all tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the sunset safari. Good afternoon, good afternoon, hello everybody, happy Wednesday, welcome to Juma Private Game Reserves and welcome here to the tent. My name is Steve, I'm joined by Ghat over there and this is on Safari. Hello everybody and good afternoon. My name is Steve. As I said before, we are on the On Safari show and here we showcase the highlights over the last 24 hours. Although these highlights are not over the last 24 hours, they're over the last few days. I think from the 31st and from this morning. So basically what we're going to be doing is looking at a few of the cool things that Cedric and myself have seen. Although it seems like today's highlights are exclusively Cedars. And maybe that's because he's going on leave tomorrow morning. So I'm sure he's very excited about that. So this afternoon, we're showcasing a little bit of him. Um, so as you know, everybody, this is a live and interactive experience. Your questions and comments are so welcome. Please send them through using the hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter. Throw them in the YouTube chat stream or send them through on the website or app. Now, Bifazook Dam has really featured in the highlights this week. And uh, Cedric spent some time, I think, on the 31st with that wonderful crocodile that's made himself home up there. As you can see, it's interesting, just moving from side to side. I don't know if he's trying to uh, lure some fish in there or like, you know, I can say trap some fish on the, on the shallow areas. But this is very interesting, eh? And he's a big one. And this is Godzilla too. Oh, and you don't want to mess with a big croc like this. And you can see just moving his head from one side to the other side. Oh, it's got something there. Hmm? I don't know what he got there. Looks like he tried to grab onto something that's inside the water. Very interesting, and it's amazing that the, this crocodile has been spending so much time here. Spending so much time here at uh, Bifilzuk Dam. And a little greenback heron in the background, just passing by. I think he's just come out of the water. You can see while he's still wet then. You can see now he's going and going. Going and going from one side to the other side. Almost like like Fat was saying now, like a spoonbill. He's like looking for something. But for what? I don't know. Maybe I can't think for a fish. Maybe a fish. Maybe there's barbels. Let's see, he's going again. He's digging into the ground there, into the sand. Interesting this. The main diet is fish until they can grab something like impala or a little kudu or something like that. But you know, there's nothing, they don't have any luck on that, and they will go for fish. Very interesting this. The main diet is fish until they can grab something like impala or a little kudu or something like that, but you know, there's nothing, they don't have any luck on that, and you know, we'll go for fish. What was he doing? 
I've been trying to research and figure out what he was actually trying to do, or she, in he, I think it's a he, in those shallow areas. And you know, Cedric's idea of potentially trying to like move through and like maybe kick up some barbel or catfish uh, makes some sense. I mean, Chad, you, you reckon maybe behaving like a spoon ball, disturbing the dirt, disturbing the mud underneath. I've never seen a crocodile do that before. I've done some research to see if I can figure out why they potentially do that. And I can't. I can't find anything. Um, as Cedric has said, he's 100% correct. Is they do feed primarily on fish. And that might be a nice <clears throat> strategy of, of, of getting some fish out of the mud. Exactly like what the spoon bill does. This is awesome, says Ian. A little bit creepy though, isn't it? To see a decent sized crocodile. What, he looks three and a half, four meters? A little bit scary. You see him properly out the water like that. Um, we've spent a few times the last few days viewing him. Haven't really got to see a good view. That was a good view. Um, Sandy Franklin, you say good afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well. And Doc, you remember the sighting. You think it caught something. I didn't see anything in the highlight there to see whether it did catch something or not. But um, no doubt a big fellow like that is definitely eating. Um, and he's definitely staying around that dam. Otherwise, he probably would be moving off shortly um sarah do they catch birds you know they've been known to catch birds you know there's a lot of birds that hang around wading birds ducks and geese and the like that will swim in and around but they are very vigilant and clearly they've it's not their first rodeo when it comes to hanging out with crocodiles so i've never seen a bird get caught uh, physically in the wild but i have seen videos of it and i'm sure it happens more often than we know um, crocodiles are opportunistics um, and they will definitely hunt a wide range of prey when it becomes available but for the most part they feed on fish and they feed on baby crocodiles so the Nile crocodile getting up to 4.9 meters on average about 15 feet um, the largest recorded was up in the Levuva River five and a half meters long it's 18 feet that is a one metric ton I don't know, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Anyway, before we get too caught up on Crocodile, let's uh, carry on and spend a little bit more time in Bivelswick Dam with Cedric again, and this time with a little pot of hippos. They say hippo that's doing funny things here. I don't know if it's busy actually mating with another hippo. It looked like it was on top there. Like a, a few minutes, a few moments of... Uh, of one being on top of another. Oh, some nice hippo action now. Eh? Well, there was now. I'm sure that once it's starting to get cool now, the sun is setting, so it's perfect for these animals to start really becoming more active getting ready for the evening a little bit of a, a spring in their step let's see now they might do something yeah? might, both of them might breach no? I think it's a little bit more playtime with them than anything else. Of the older one on the side, the youngster on the right. Oh, there. I think it's just a bit of playtime. Maybe a mom and calf. It's enjoying the late afternoon. Youngster, yeah.
Well, Bivolsuk Dam <clears throat> certainly seems to be the place to be over the last couple of days. And I said to you at the beginning of the clip comments that maybe that they were mating. Now, I've seen male and a female hippo mate, and he forcibly like holds her under the water and then just keeps her there. Um, it's not that much running around, I suppose. I suppose if she wants to get away, she can. But uh, males are poly polygamous, and only about 10% of males actually have um, the right area or territory to be able to mate with females. And uh, they obviously attract females or gain dominance through vocalizations and through sticking their bum up and, and uh, splattering the poo everywhere. And what we saw in that clip there was that it looked like a female and a youngster. And they were just being quite boisterous with each other. And every now and again, you actually notice the youngster stuck its bum up and kind of did a bit of a tail flick without actually defecating. So it might be a young male coming into AIDS, just sort of learning the tricks of the trade of how do I behave like an adult hippo. And that's one of the things you have to learn. You know, it all starts with play. All the things that big boys or big girls do in life starts off as a, as a game when they're much younger. And what a good way to play it then with your mom inside the dam in safe conditions when you're not that big that you're going to cause upset to the big male hippo because, well, if he was bigger and it wasn't his dad, there would certainly be all sorts of trouble. So everybody, it's really nice to see hippos when they are busy uh, moving around like that. Um, that was that was you as well, Khat. Was that straight after that uh, crocodile? So okay. <laughs> the way that they zoomed out, all the action was happening at the same time. Um, so Sarah, no, Sarah already got that. ASB, you love hippos. Well, we definitely do spend enough time with them. Um, I don't think we spend enough time at Chitwa Dam. We are definitely going to be spending more time there over the coming days. Um, I spent a, a, an evening there. On Monday, we got some really good action with some birds fishing, which was quite special. And Chitwa has provided over the years, especially as the water starts to get a little bit more, a little bit lower, because now there's abundance of water. So we do have hippos pretty much in every water body possible in the northern Sabi Sands. And um, Chitwa is that last resort. As everything starts drying out, they'll all move back there again. And that's when stuff really starts to kick off. We've seen things in Chitwa over the years that can truly boggle the mind. Um, Alibamba, love when animals do things we don't expect them to do. And so I think that's the whole thing about nature. Nature has got, um, what's the word? It is predictable, but it's also surprising at times. So um, when you get to know animal behavior to degree, you know when an animal is going to do something. For example, if I walk up to a dam and a, there's a young hippo in there and he, he behaves, immediately there's a little bit of a look to him then I know almost instantly he's going to start behaving in a certain way that's going to be quite comical. And what that is, is often he'll put his bum up and do the, the splashing of the feces or the dung, and he might also bell roll. Um, it's kind of a way of him advertising, I'm here, I'm in this patch, how dare you come near my patch. It's also something that young males do when they're not that confident. Um, but you can kind of predict that, especially when you see how they behave in the initial stages, especially on foot. If you're coming up to watching home, I've seen that a number of times with young hippos that are just trying to find their, their feet, so to say, in these little dams or pans. Um, <laughs> and they really are quite comical. Gert, you've spent a lot of time with hippos here in Juma. Do you have a, a favorite? Maybe Dewey with his stick, eh? And we definitely spend lots of time with Dewey. And that's predictable, but not always guaranteed. Welcome back live, everybody. We, we are here with the highlight show. And uh, it is Cedric's last afternoon. I know he's very excited to be going on a spot of leave. So let's go check it with him and see what his plans are for his last drive. Thank you so much, Stephen. Yes. It is my last safari for this stint, and what a wonderful stint it has been. Oh my word, I had such amazing sightings, and I'm hoping that this afternoon is going to bring another fantastic sighting for all of us. And uh, well, 
my plan for a beautiful afternoon like this here on a lovely Wednesday. I think uh, Beeks and myself, I think we're going to try and look around here, maybe to follow up on that female leopard tracks that we had coming up into this area, maybe Tlalumba, you never know. I would love to end my stint with uh, some rosettes, um, but if not, we're going to go down to Twin Dams, go look around there, go look at other things. Maybe you go and try and follow up on Chella. You never know. Maybe she might be lying around there somewhere, uh, which would be fantastic. Oh, I wouldn't mind that at all. So that is my plans for the afternoon. And uh, yes, I cannot wait to, to get out on safari. Hello everybody, it seems I've lost comms there. He seems to be back with us. Let me just check why I didn't hear that. Anyway, uh, Cedric, I'm sure you're going to go and have a wonderful time out there. Uh, we'll be connecting with you as soon as we come out ourselves. Uh, not quite sure yet what we're going to do. We're still formulating a plan for the afternoon. It is getting quite muggy, so we'll probably go and check out some watering holes. Okay, so as I said, it's been quite an quite a few days for Cedric. We are celebrating his his day going on leave and well he spent some time with a crocodile once again at Bifosuk Dam and well I wonder if you can guess what the crocodile is up to this time. Look at everybody we've got this crocodile that's busy eating the water buck. Oh my word. He's trying to rip some of the meat off the water buck now. So you can see it does like that quick. That's a big croc, eh? He's going to try and grab and he's going to try and do a quick movement now to try and rip it off. I'll rip the meat off there. Wow! I can imagine just how big this is. We were actually talking about it uh, a few days ago when we were sitting here and watching this crocodile. And we thought it was about two and a half, but then we actually realized it's much bigger than two and a half because it came close to the surface yet or close to the side. And we realized that this crocodile is at least about three and a half meters so long. So it's a, it's a big crocodile. It's a big crocodile. I think you said that. Um, three and a half, four. How, what do you reckon? Four? Yeah. Looking at that, that first clip there. It looks much bigger because I, I haven't seen it clearly until I saw that clip today. Um, saw it in the dam. We were actually on Monday evening. We all ended up at Buffelswick Dam and we I saw Gert and, and Cedric looking at this water buck that was sort of hanging out there, hanging out and, and rotting in the water. And there were fish all around as he feeding and doing their thing. You couldn't get a good uh, idea of the size of that crocodile. But the first clip definitely showed he was a big thing, big big animal so um lovely to see all these crocodile sightings mandy it is and uh, caitlin boss this was so cool to see so not so cool for the water buck though you know i mean we know crocodiles are ambush specialists we know that they feed on fish and young crocodiles when you go to a dam you won't find young crocodiles with big just doesn't work that way you'll find a few small ones or you'll find a big one or two big ones in the area you won't really find little ones hanging out because well they eat each other um birds will get taken as well and then general game that comes down to the water's edge that's not vigilant enough including the likes of cheetah will definitely get taken and pulled into the water and drought i know it can seem quite grim everybody you know to see this chunk of meat hanging in the water and crocodiles quite often will take it out turn it bell roll it drown it um, they can hold their breath for more than an hour. Um, no one I know has been able to do it for more than a couple of minutes, five minutes maybe. 
um, and the exertion. When If an animal gets pulled out, it's not just them trying to hold their breath. There's panic. There's absolute terror that's going on. So I'm sure they drown within moments. And then the crocodile will either cache them underneath the root of a tree in, in flowing rivers, or they'll just let them sit in the middle of a dam. Terrapins are known to feed on them. Fish will as well. And then you saw the crocodile. We couldn't see it very clearly, but it was doing a lot of pulling motion. The In the Mara, we saw that quite well on the wildebeest and the zebra that had been caught and were fresh and the, the body was just caught in the river. The crocodile will hold and just do this barrel roll and it'll just rip the whole limb off. Um, those That mouth just closed down like that. I remember having a look at a skull when I used to work at Singita. They had this beautiful skull. It was about this big on the uh, on the ledge at the long bar there. It was just the skull. And you'd lift the skull up and just put your arm inside and just, just lift, put the skull back down. All the teeth intact. And just that resting on your arm was actually painful. It was actually quite sore and how heavy that was. So you can imagine that thing snapping shut um, and those teeth going into the flesh and then it's holding like this and then that entire body twists. There's just really no chance of that body part or that that limb or the flesh that the crocodile's holding onto not being ripped off. And so that's how they feed. And you notice in that clip, he comes up above the water once he's got some meat, goes in, because the gala pouch is at the bottom here, um, which is closed when the crocodile's underwater and when it's drowning its prey. And as soon as it wants to feed, it has to open that gala pouch. So it has to come out of the water to do so. Uh, otherwise, it's going to flood in. So, so they say, I've never tried this, but if a crocodile ever grabs you, you've got to shove your hand or your foot down his throat to get that pouch to open it so it starts to drown and will let you go. Gaat? <laughs> Something to remember if you ever do find yourself in the water. Just stay away from the water when there's crocodiles. Just be careful. Okay, everyone, so we know that they're ambush predators. Um, we know that they're capable of, of launching themselves out of the water. Um, that video that's gone viral that was shot at Pinda by Glenn, who worked for Wild Earth at the time, of that cheetah coming down. You've seen it, right? It's an unbelievable video. I mean, he was just filming a cheetah drinking water. I don't think anyone knew there was a crocodile there, including that cheetah. And the speed that that crocodile came out the water, because its tail is basically just made out of muscle. And that tail enables it to, to move at incredible speed. So it'll be sitting underneath the water like this, quite close to where the animal is. And it'll put that tail into like an S and then it'll just launch. And that power can shoot it a meter, two meters forward and um, catch whatever it needs to. I saw a video recently of, a, I think it was a bushbuck on Yala that came down to drink and they slow motioned it. And the crocodile came out and the bushbuck moved that is just lightning speed and i reckon that that small antelope had ptsd probably still does have ptsd today uh, from that experience but you can never trust water bodies where there are crocodiles everybody be very very cautious and stay safe Welcome back live, everybody. We're, we're still here in the highlights show. Um, Jane, what's the biggest prey you've seen crocodiles feed on? Mm, impala. Um, probably, I haven't seen bigger than an impala. But um, I'm sure they do take much larger prey than that. Uh, the cheetah's probably bigger than the impala, weight-wise. So the cheetah's probably the largest animal that I've seen. But, uh, oh... Sorry, wildebeest. Wildebeest and zebra in the Mara. I always forget about my experience in the Mara with hundreds of crocodiles um, just snapping away at the animals over there. Okay, well, Eric and Morgan are down in Amakala and they are very excited to tell you their plans for the afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, welcome, 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 you're here with us on Safari at Amakala Private Game Reserve with myself, Eric, your naturalist for this afternoon. Had a fairly nice morning with a beautiful, beautiful sunrise, 
And uh, I think this afternoon we're going to try and see if we can't replica that same sunrise except for sunset. And uh, in the hopes that we can also maybe find our herd of elephants. I know that they've moved a little bit closer to us and maybe are playing with some mud. And we'd like to go and maybe catch them in the act. Other than that, that's it from my side here at Amakala. We look forward to seeing you out there. Some elephants. Uh, I know that the elephants in Amakala are so splendid to spend time with. And I know that Morgan, they're his favorite animal next to the hardy dog. Okay, so everybody, we've got a wonderful clip just to jump up to Kenya. Uh, I've got a clip that I'm going to talk over from Africam, and this is just such. When I saw this today, I was just blown away at the way that they've positioned this. They've clearly been planning how this is set up as these lions come down in the Oldonia Lodge in Kenya. Now, Oldonia Lodge is located over 11. 1,011, sorry, 111,000 hectares of private land in the heart of the Chulu Hills between Kenya's Savo and Amboseli National Parks. The property honed from the ancient layer of rock spewed out of the Kilimanjaro 360,000 years ago creates a timelessness that touches everyone visiting. Unbelievable. And to witness lions drinking with, of course, Mount Kilimanjaro behind, what could you ask for? Now, Chulu Nature Reserve, or private reserve, is a rugged wilderness showing signs of its volcanic origins and boasting, as you can see, some of the best views of Kilimanjaro there. Got a nice summer, October to April, with them. Um, 20 degrees Celsius minimums and 34 degrees Celsius max. Winter may between September uh, 11 degrees min maximum 25. Have long rains between April and May. Short rains from November to mid December. Now why visit this area? Why not? Look at that. Look at those views. I mean I think that's just such a splendid setting. Um, apparently that watering hole is quite close to the lodge and you can actually watch big tuskers coming down to drink. Um, Ambuseli's close by. Uh, Tsavo, obviously the stories of the, the lion, the man-eating lions in Tsavo. Have you ever seen the, 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 doc, the movie Ghost in the Darkness? Gert, you've seen that one? Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good movie, but don't watch it before bed, I promise you. But isn't that just a splendid screenshot right there? When I saw this clip today, I just was like, where is this place? I want to go there. So thanks Africam for giving us these images. It's nice to be able to add them uh, to the backdrop of the show. And um, it definitely makes me want to go and experience Kilimanjaro from that point. Um, my uncle has climbed it. Um, an ex-girlfriend of mine has climbed it. A few other people I know. I don't think I'll ever climb Kilimanjaro. I don't really think that's something I need to do in my life. But I could definitely go and witness lions at a watering hole there in and just enjoy the scenery from the bottom. Gert, how about yourself? You want to go up? Yeah. Yeah, Gert keen. Gert keen. So lots and lots of lion activity and elephants. Um, Kenya is definitely one of those destinations. I've got my Kenyan bangle still on my wrist over here, which I've had for quite a few years now. Um, I was just going through my photos today and um, so many images and clips from my time up in the Mara. I'm going to have to be rehashing some memories and um, re-looking and re-sort of sharing some things that took place with me between um, 2018 and, and 2019. I think I went to the Maasai Mara for elements of the migration for at least six times. How special. Someone has to do it though. You know, I mean, someone has to go up there and, and do all of this work. Anyway, so Gert, I don't know what we're going to do this afternoon. We didn't find many tracks today, so I think we're going to go find some elephants. I think we're going to go check some water points, um, start off with Gary Dam, maybe do some birding. Uh, we're probably having a kid's drive, I think, as we start, so we're going to drop into some nice low-key conversations, do some birding, find some animals, and just go out there and have some fun. Uh, James Henry will be joining us. 
uh, this evening, and he'll be on live drive tomorrow morning in place of Cedric. But everybody, we do thank you for joining us on this uh, afternoon's uh, on safari. Ghat myself have thoroughly enjoyed being in the tent, showing you these wonderful clips. Uh, we'll see you on live drive shortly. Until then, see you just now. Bye.